بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف الأنبياء والمرسلين محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أقوم بعد ما بعد أن سيستاز ابن القيم الجوزي رحمة الله عليه من الله سبحانه وتعالى جرانت هم the highest status with him in Jannah and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward him in keeping with his majesty and grace. He said that every human being is a slave. You are either a slave of your desires or a slave of Allah. You either live life by your rules or the rules of Allah. Now, the problem with living life by our rules is that when we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is not a matter of choice, that is something which is inevitable, which will happen, we will be judged according to Allah's rules, not according to our rules. So if I live my life according to my rules, and my rules are the same as the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then I'm fine. But if I'm living my life according to my rules, and my rules are different from those of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then I'm in trouble. Even if I'm living my rule by my life by my rules, but the reason I am living them by my rules is because I want to live by my rules and not by the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then those are not accepted. Because when we say live life according to uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rules, it means that it is not only the rule itself, but also the desire and intention to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of which we are living by those rules. Which means that the question of me and mine and my property and my desire and so forth does not come into the picture. If I'm living by the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but I am, or if I'm living by my rules, it means that pleasing myself is the objective, even though it may be the same rule. It's like saying, for example, a person who is fasting, one of them is fasting to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because it is a fard that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made compulsory on us and therefore he or she is fasting to fulfill that duty and to uh, please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's one reason for fasting. Another person is fasting because he says fasting is good for health. So I'm fasting. Now, both are Muslims, both are doing that in Ramadan. But the reality is that the one who is fasting, because he says fasting is good for health, has not fasted. The fast of Ramadan. Because his, his intention is not to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On the other hand, the one who is fasting to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has fasted, he will get the reward of the fast. And it is already, in any case, it is good for his health. So, living by the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the purpose of pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not mean that you are missing out on anything or that you will not get the worldly benefit of that action. So, every human being is a slave. You are either a slave of your desires or a slave of Allah. You either live, by, you either live life by your rules or the rules of of Allah. And as I told you, the safety is to live by the rules of Allah because we will be judged by the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibn al-Qayyim rahmatullahi again says, how can the heart travel to Allah if it is chained by desires? He said, how can the heart travel to God if it is chained by, if it is chained, chained, chained by its desires? Now travel to Allah, travel to God means be connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how can that happen if the heart is chained by its desires? The key thing is that in any connection, it is the desire to make that connection which precedes any effort, right? Any connection is made by two things. One is, of course, some of these things, they seem very obvious, but they are not that obvious because we don't, we make mistakes all the time. So, obviously, so, so if it was obvious, we would not be making mistakes. But they're not obvious, so we make mistakes. And these mistakes are serious because they end up by making us lose the benefit that we would have otherwise got from that action. And this is one of the games that shaitan plays with us, which is that if he cannot 
make you commit sin, he will allow you to commit something which is good, but in a way which detracts from its full and complete reward. So he corrupts your action. If he cannot prevent an act, if he cannot prevent an action, he will corrupt the action. So he cannot prevent you from salah, but he will corrupt the action of salah by making it full of riya, of showing off, uh, of uh, you know, doing this salah in a way. Uh, where your desire supersedes the desire to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the problem of hearts being chained by their desires is that this is the source of corruption. If my desires are chaining my heart, then how can my heart connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The heart of the slave which is connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has only one desire, and that desire is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If there is any other desire, then this second desire is a corrupter of the first one, of ikhlas, of sincerity. And without ikhlas niya, without sincerity of intention, uh, whatever deed I may do is not accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala jalla jalla. So it is extremely important for us to remember this when we are... Um, when we are looking at our deen and how we uh, practice it. Um, Ibn al-Qaim also said, O son of Adam, sell this world for the hereafter and you will win both. Sell the hereafter for this world and you will lose both. Let me repeat that beautiful advice. He said, sell this world for the hereafter and you will win both. You will get the world and the hereafter. Sell the hereafter for this world and you lose both. The meaning of selling the selling the world means to give uh, selling the world for the hereafter means to give the hereafter precedence over this world. To give actions which have uh, benefit in the hereafter precedence over actions which have benefit only in this world. Here, remember, we are not even talking about haram. Haram must not be done, period. We are even talking about halal. Even if it is halal, uh, we give precedence to something which is beneficial in the hereafter over something which is merely uh, beneficial in this dunya. For example, you might say, I want to watch a soccer match, right? So fantastic, very nice, nothing wrong with that. You can watch the match. You can say, I want to play soccer. So it's good for you, good for your health as well, because you're practicing and you're you know, you're running and so on and so forth. Um, but then time comes for Salah by Jamaah. And Shaitan tells you, well, the time for Salah is not finished. We still have, especially in the summer in here in America, you have, you know, between the, for the Zohar and Asr Salah, the Salawat, they have long times. So it's well, you know, oh, you, you can pray on your own or you can pray a couple of people together. You can pray. Where is the need to go to the masjid? Even though masjid is close by, uh, let's just pray. Continue your game. Finish the game. Right? In the middle of the game, you stop and uh, it's embarrassing. You know, what will people say? All kinds of excuses. So what is happening here? You are giving precedence to the dunya, which is your, your, uh, your salah, uh, which is your uh, soccer. Uh, or basketball or whatever, some sport, um, over the akhira, which is your salah. And, and you are saying, well, you know, this is okay, but if I uh, go for salah, I will miss out on this. On the other hand, if you give precedence to the salah, which is the hereafter, you will gain both meaning that you are still playing the game. The game is not going anywhere. You can come back and play the game. You will still get the benefit of the game. And Allah will put barakah in that. And so you will get even more benefit, plus you have got the benefit of salah by fard salah by jama'ah in the masjid, which is 27 times whatever else benefit you would have got. So with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have benefited for both. Now question is, how do you get there? The way we get there is by remembering that Ask yourself a simple question. If you want to check and say, should I do this action or should I do that action? 
uh, which one is more important. Ask yourself one simple question. And that question is, what if I die in the middle of that action? All right? What if I die in the middle of a soccer game? I will be resurrected in the middle of a soccer game before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not haram, but it's not the greatest way, way of dying or being resurrected. On the other hand, if I give the soccer game, uh, uh, you know, if I put that behind my back and I say, no, I'm going to pray Salah by Jama, and my death was written at that particular point in time, and I die, then I have died in Salah. Which is better? That's a dumb question. It's a no-brainer. I'm sure you understand the answer to that. So ask yourself that question for any action. If you want to see which one is superior to the, to the other one, you ask, if I die in this state, which is better? Or if I die in that state, which is better? So if I die praying, is it better? Or if I die uh, playing soccer, is that better? I know it's a dumb question, but that's um, just, to, just to illustrate the point. So give precedence to the dunya over the akhirah and you lose both. And give precedence to the akhirah over the dunya and you gain both. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to take intelligent decisions that benefit us in the dunya wal akhirah. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyil kareem wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in bi rahmatika wa rahim.